that is thought to have been made from his actual face when he was taken out of his country villa and laid to rest in the city of Florence. For most of us, Lorenzo de' Medici is a symbol of the Florentine Renaissance. In fact, his name is almost synonymous with Florence and with the Renaissance. He is well known, he is universally admired, he is adored by many. He is considered to be a culmination of that wit, charm, urbanity, and scholarship that we have come to associate with the Renaissance. And this is a contemporary cut showing Lorenzo charming the young women of the city of Florence. So Lorenzo is well known to us, but Girolamo Savonarola, if he is known to people at all, is usually dismissed as something of a throwback to the Middle Ages, as one modern historian referred to him. He is, in fact, simply dismissed by most teachers, most historians. He is not considered to be really a man of the Renaissance. Now, why do we have this attitude that Lorenzo is the Renaissance and his contemporary, Savonarola, is a throwback to the Middle Ages? Well, that attitude, I think, is a result of three myths that we have built up and hold near and dear about the Renaissance. And those three myths are these. Number one, we have built up a false idea of what the Renaissance really was. Secondly, we have built up a myth about ourselves, who we are and how we relate to the Renaissance. And finally, we have built up a grand mythology about the Medici clan itself. Now, those three myths that obscure Savonarola's importance in the Renaissance and elevate Lorenzo's importance. Those three myths were actually invented in the latter part of the 19th century as part of an intellectual and cultural backlash to the growing democratic, egalitarian, political, and economic movements in Europe. The later 19th century member is the age of democracy, of socialism, of communism, of anarchism. And the aristocratic, educated people of Europe were rebelling from this every manism. And they started looking at themselves and their past in a different way. For instance, the great English historian, Thomas Carlyle, started writing about not every man in history, but the hero in history. How a single individual can turn the tide of historical events. Part of the backlash was with Richard Wagner, who started writing and composing music about the heroes of Nordic mythology. And Nietzsche, at the same time, proposes the Übermensch, the aesthetic superman who can guide society in the direction that he sees fit. As the intellectuals were rebelling against growing democracy and growing economic egalitarianism, there was a Swiss historian by the name of Jakob Burkhardt and Burkhardt wrote a book called The Civilization of the Renaissance in Italy. And in this book, he created a new hero for Western Europe. And that new hero was epitomized by Leonardo da Vinci. Burkhardt invented the ideal of the Renaissance man. And the way Burkhardt presented the Renaissance to us was as if all of Florence was filled with Renaissance men like da Vinci walking around during the Renaissance. Well, the truth of the matter is, da Vinci was unique. Florence was not filled with Renaissance men during the Renaissance like Leonardo. He stood out because he was so odd and unusual from his peers and contemporaries. But Burkhardt now invents the Renaissance man as a new ideal, the new hero for the Europeans. And Burkhardt created a new concept of what the Renaissance was. He said the Renaissance was an age that can be characterized by the adjective secular instead of religious. He said it was an age of science instead of superstition. He said it was an age of scholarly pursuit instead of devotional retreats and prayers. It was a concept of the Renaissance and of the men of the Renaissance that was actually a better description of Burkhardt himself and his generation rather than of the Renaissance itself. That's where we get these myths about the Renaissance. What was the Renaissance? Burkhardt maintains, and in the university it's still taught to this day, as a secular age. The truth of the matter is the Renaissance was not in the least bit secular. 
The men of the Renaissance were devoutly religious, devoutly Christian, devoutly Roman Catholic. We, frankly, when we read about the men of the Renaissance, are a little bit uncomfortable with what we see as their simple faith. I mean, these men are supposed to be so hardcore scientific and secular, but you read biographies of them, and they're all devout churchgoers. They're all devout Roman Catholics. The truth of the matter is that they all lived and died within the parameters of Roman Catholicism.